Hello there YouTube, Daedric Diamond here, and welcome to Perfect Apocalypse Purgatory Forever. Now, this is the sequel to Perfect Apocalypse 1, and I think it was only natural that this game was going to follow up, since, uh, out of the whole event of the Xmas special I was doing, the very first day did the best. I think with Yumi Nikki being, like, second place in terms of views. But without further ado, we're gonna go ahead and get the sequels in. And that's right, I said sequels. There is another game after this, but that's gonna probably be a Tomorrow Project, so... If you stay tuned, I will probably have that up. And without further ado, we're gonna get started. Which I have already done so. Now, I have played this one, and I have played the third one. I have to say the first and the third parts I enjoyed the most. The second one, that's not to say it was bad, but... I don't know. Anyway. Last week, 1,000 dogs were killed. As the puzzle of one of the most evil creatures known to dog kind. Oh my. A cat. Yes, a mere cat. This ain't no any ordinary cat. It has magical powers on the hunt for the killer of her dear little brother. Is that a... Okay, no, that's his feet, as I say. Is that an angel wing? She killed all who stood in her way, and even some who didn't. Well, jeez. I mean, like I said, I have played this before, but I keep forgetting that. She ain't exactly the good guy, either. Though through her frenzy struck fear into the heart of every dog there. The killer remained elusive. Peter. Now, to quickly mention this, but if ever I say Peter, I do mean Patches. It's kind of an inside joke thing, but when I first played this, I, uh... At least for the first part. I had the bad habit of calling this character Peter for some reason. I am aware it's Patches, but if I say Peter, do be aware I mean Patches. <clears throat> anyway. Until a puppy named Olive showed up. Oh my. <laughs> With an uncanny ability to be in the right place at the right time, they and their friends helped find the killer. Uh, was pretty much already hugging the killer. All I was gonna say is, is Peter's face for the win? <laughs> Thus, freeing the cat from her rampage and offering her lost brother a new body. These cats and dogs lived happily ever after. For now. But the weight of 1,000 dead dogs still hang in the air in their conscience. Ugh. Yeah, it still hangs in the air, pretty much. Chapter 1. All of Slam's gate shut behind them. They are out of breath and flinch every time the zombies slam their rotting paws against the metal gate. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I don't know what you're talking about. The zombies roar in frustration. Now that Olive isn't scrambling through the dark woods, they notice the zombies are clad in... Name I can't pronounce, but they're wearing high school uniforms, pretty much. Oh. Oh no. I'm sorry, I didn't recognize all of you. Maybe you can, can uh, come to my surprise birthday party and we can all help stitch you up. The zombies roar in frustration once more. I, I can tell you're confused. See what was supposed to be the surprise party, but Brownie spoiled it for me as soon as I told her when my birthday was. But it can still be surprising since you're all. You are all pay. <laughs> you know what? I'll just go find you all someone else who can help. Preferably a. Um... <clears throat> Oh wait, never mind, I can't say that. Never mind, I can't make that joke. 
Anyway, while it backs away slowly as the zombies continue to moan in their frustrations, I need to find Coco and to bet her magic can fix these poor pups up. Assuming she even wants to do that, we will inspect the grave. Angel! Really? Am I just reading it wrong? I mean... Was only born a year... Okay, you know what? Just... Because I get it now. I had to think. Anyway. Oh, let's actually go back. Eek! Angel's grave all dug up. Must have been become a zombie too, but how? I need to find everyone quick. Uh... <clears throat> I'm going to just instead inspect the gate. The zombies shamble into each other at the gate. There's absolutely no threat of them breaking through. They're even less capable than they were alive. This makes all of outrunning them seem even less impressive. If anyone wants to leave the house, they have to get past all these zombies. Let's inspect the window. The left window figures quivering and shaking, unnaturally with scary pointy ears. The right window is standing a figure with a cute floppy ears. Alright. As I've said before, I have played this game, just so everyone's aware. But I'm gonna go through it again, because, I mean, I went through the first game, so I think it's only fair if I go through all three. Anyway, let's inspect the house. I guess Coco and Angel's family name is Gremlikin. Gremlin? That's another name I can't pronounce. Cute and spooky, just like them. Cute and spooky, just like them. I forgot he said that. Whoa, it's nice. Ah, wow, it's so nice in here. I wonder where where everybody is. Hello there, Angel, who is in Peter's body. Ah, uh, Peter, I mean Angel, you're okay. Olive pulls Angel into an awkward hug, and Angel re uh, recipitates the hug, making it way less awkward. Olive, I'm so happy you made it. I didn't know how to contact you. Coco was certain you would succumb to the zombies, if not to your own clumsiness. Wow, talk about having no faith. Whatsoever. The hero of the first game essentially already being mocked again. I mean, I wouldn't trip and die in the woofs. I mean, woods. Hey, he also messes up the same much like me. Well, maybe. I did trip a few times, but that doesn't matter. Somehow miraculously survives. Where is every pup? And where's Coco? Ah, if you're worried about... There's no need. The others are off exploring the house while Coco is taking care of the zombies. Taking care of them? How? I'm not sure. But I trust in her abilities. For now, feel free to join the others while Coco and I clean up the mess we've made. It's the least we could do. Uh, okay, I'll see if I can find them. Hmm. Alright. Inspect the cushion. There are five cushions. One for Brownie, Sparky Angel, Coco, and me. I guess no one was expecting 1,000 undead guests. We better get more pillows. I don't think they'll be interested in pillows. Wow, this tea kind of looks like... What a cute pup. Why don't I drink the tea? Ah, no one will mind if I just try a bit. Hollow picks up the teapot and drinks straight from the sprout. A bunch of lukewarm tea spills down their chin and onto their overalls. That's so good. They take another swig but start choking. Angel looks at Olive from the other side of the room, alarmed. Uh, Olive, are you okay? Olive cuffs off a small key! Alright! They turn towards Angel, coughing and sputtering. Uh, right. You over there. Oh, sorry. Oh, right. You're over there. <laughs> uh, I was just smelling the tea. Ah, okay. They turn back towards the table and whisper to themselves. A key. This should be useful. 
Let's go ahead and enter the kitchen where there's a Sparky. Talk to Sparky. Olive jumps into Sparky, giving him a big hug. Sparky flinches and pushes Olive away. Ah! Sorry, Olive, you caught me off guard. Ah, it's okay, sorry for jumping on you. No, it's totally fine. Sparky pulls Olive into a far more subdued hug. They sink into relieved. Rowney and I got here a while ago, and are the zombies still out there? Yeah, there's like... There are like a thousand of them. Oh, too bad. Sparky, are you okay? You seem tired. Uh, I'm okay. I haven't been able to get much sleep for the past few days. <laughs> May not have been contending with something. Let's nap together then. Uh, that might just make it worse. No! I mean, that would be a bad idea. It would ruin my image. <laughs> I seem to have started sleepwalking. Oh my! That doesn't sound too bad. That just means I should hug you while you nap. Woof. Maybe sleepwalking is a bit of an understatement. When I wake up, everyone around me looks horrified, sometimes even hurt. And I don't remember anything, but I feel like I've said or done things that I regret. I can't let myself hurt anyone else, so no napping, ta no napping for the time being. In fact, I shouldn't even be around you right now. Ah, oh, Sparky, if you meant to hurt anyone, I'm sure they'd understand. You didn't mean to. That's a nice sentiment, Olive, but better safe than sorry. Sparky backs into a corner in the kitchen. Let's inspect the fridge. It's dripping with something. Ah, uh, you know what? I don't think I have anything to fear. Olive tentatively opens the fridge. The filled or thing with a stretch of flesh blood. Ah. Uh-oh. They're gonna be able to smell the blood from across the room. Looks like he's gonna be sick. Yeah. You know what? Let's do that again. Leap, enter kitchen. Talk to Sparky. I've already read all that, so I'm gonna kind of skip around a bit. We're gonna this time inspect the knife block. All the knives are safe and sound in their knife block. Until Peter arrives. Inspect the pots and pans. I wonder what Coco and Angel like to cook. And then we'll leave. And then we'll go upstairs. Then we'll inspect the portraits. Angel and Coco as kittens. How cute. Everyone must see this. And then embarrass everyone. Let's enter the bathroom. Olive tries to open the door. Hey, can't you knock first? Knock. Olive knocks on the door. Occupied. Oh, so sorry, I'll come back later. Huh? Olive? Door whips open, revealing a happy little... Kuguri. I can't pronounce that. She pulls Olive into the bathroom. B Brownie! Ollie, my dog, you're alive! No, I'm dead. And you're just speaking to the specter that looks very much alive. But trust me, it's a ghost. Brownie hugs Olive with a vice grip and spins them around in excitement. I thought you were a gunner for sure. Do you really... Do you, do you guys really think I'm that weak? Ah, who cares? You made it. Happy surprise birthday party. H happy surprise birthday party. What are you doing in the bathroom, Brownie? I, I mean, if you're not using it for the intended purposes, that is... Any things you can do in a bathroom besides, you know, for its intended purpose. You can hide in there, you can hide stuff in there. Yeah. Anyway, uh, you know, just hanging out. Uh, I guess it's kind of nice in here. Oh, uh, okay, okay. To keep you from thinking of me as some kind of freak who hangs out alone in bathrooms all day, I'll tell you the truth. Don't tell Sparky, but when I told him I had to go to use the bathroom a half hour ago, it was just really an excuse to, uh, ditch him. Oh, why? Sparky is so handsome and cool and tall. Did we also forget he said he was also kind of sleepwalking, too? Olive, you think that about literally everyone, and even if they're shorter than you. Truth is, he's been acting like such a freak lately. I won't get in... I won't get into it 
So, if you want to know, just talk to him. I'll go check on him. First, let's inspect the toilet. Toilets are loud and scary. I don't think they are. Let's inspect the toilet again. Okay, look under the sink. Not towards Dalmatians. Wait. What? Under the sink is a, is a bunch of fur products. Many marketed towards Dalmatians. Okay, if... I'm not gonna say anything. Oh, right, I remember now. Never mind. I guess Angel's trying to feel at home in his new body. Yes, I've had a brain fart. I kept forgetting Angel is now in Peter's body. So, let's inspect the bathtub. The bathtub is clogged. Oh, well, let me unclog it. Reaches into the cloudy bathwater to pull out whatever is plugging the drain. Ah! Brownie glances worryingly at Olive, flailing in the disgust bathwater. She's relieved when Olive pulls their paw out and simply full of disgusting fur. The tub begins draining. Ah, it's gross and sad. I can't stop thinking about how sad cats are when they take baths. The tub drains, revealing a key. A key? I bet this will be really handy. Ah, alright. I think I know what's gonna go on here. Like I said, it has been a while, so... Let's inspect the portraits... Now that I think I've exhausted every, uh, thing that I can think to do. If I'm thinking, there's probably also one in the kitchen. We'll leave that for now. And we're gonna avoid taking Sparky, because memory is best serving me on his, uh, situation, so... Let's go upstairs. If I recall, I think it's three to enter the bedroom, right? Yup, three. Your birthday, Olive. Sorry about the zombies. Is uh, uh, recompense? I owe you one birthday party wish, Coco. Ah, birthday wish. Coco's the best. Let's try entering. Olive tries the door is locked. From behind, you can hear the yelling. Hey, read the sign, moron! It, I better go. All right, well, we, no. There's really nothing else I can do, so we go downstairs. I'm thinking the objective I'm looking for is definitely in the kitchen. And it's probably in the fridge. All right, let's take a gamble. Okay, so that did work. All right. Now I think we're at the phase where we gather everyone. Just to maybe give a small kind of walkthrough. I think it doesn't... I think depending on who you're... Could you give me a moment? I'll be right back. And I'm back. I had to... I really need to start putting myself a little reminder to put Discord on silent mode every time. Otherwise, I sincerely apologize if you hear Badoop. Now, anyway, why don't we stay here and talk to Angel? Angel's gonna be the one I will impress in this game. Hey, Angel, what are you up to? Coco asked me to stand guard over the entrance to make sure the zombies don't get in. I stand outside and watch the gate, but their groaning gives me a headache. It makes me feel bad. Let's ask Angel out. Well, well, I don't think the zombies will be breaking in anytime soon. Yeah, I, I guess they have no more of an infinity for metal fences as they did when they were alive. Would you like to hang out with me until Ko, Ko is done uh, taking care of them? Hmm. 
Ninja looks through the window to see how the zombies are doing. They're mindlessly walking into the fence, mis moaning about revenge or something. Or perhaps they're just following the orders of someone, maybe. Or maybe they're doing as zombies always do. Alright, let's hang out. Yay! Now, let's inspect the table. Inspect the cushions. It's very least, but I think the uh, uh, ah, solution here is less zombies, not more pillows. And I want Angel on my side. I'm gonna have a little buddy-buddy thing. So let's exit the house. Inspect the grave. Eek, your grave's all dug up. This is alarming. My theory on the zombies was that their souls reclaim their bodies. But my soul is in this body, right? Um, <clears throat> that's gonna be a no. What has my old body? It'll be okay, Angel. Maybe they're nice. Coco will figure it out. I hope you're right. Well, then let's inspect the gate. The zombies shamble into each other through. That's absolutely no threat of them breaking through. They're even less capable than they were alive. Careful, they're not like us anymore. They're not the living. Ruthman sounds cute and spooky, just like you and Coco. Ah, thank you. You're cute, too. I wonder what everybody else's last names are. Hey! I want Angel on my side. Let's now... enter the house. Let's try going upstairs. Maybe we'll enter the bathroom. We'll inspect the bathtub. Bathtub's drained. Inspect the toilet. Toilets are loud and scary. All I can hope is, is that in some alternative universe, cats have found a quieter way to conduct their business. Look under the sink. Are you trying to feel at home in your new body? No, I just miss how fast my fur used to grow. Well, I think you look nice, no matter what kind of fur you have. Olive pets Angel's fur. He's very happy. Yes, because I want Angel on my side. This is going to be kind of that whole phase of me wooing him, and then we're going to probably go ahead and proceed to the next chapter. Inspect the knife block. All the knives are safe back in their block. Inspect the fridge. The fridge is filled with raw meat dripping with blood. Inspect the pots. Can Angel, do you cook? Not really. Those are just for brewing potions and ingredients for magical spells. So they're often coated in poisonous residue. Oh my, I'm just as bad as Peter himself with that smile, he says to himself. Olive, just about to lift one off its hook, shrinks back. Uh, alrighty. Well, I have a bad feeling. So let's save. We're gonna talk to Sparky. Sparky stands quietly in the corner. Actually, we'll leave him alone for now. Go upstairs. Enter the bathroom. Grab Coco. Ask, I mean, sorry, Coco. Brownie, wrong character. Remember Brownie, are you busy? Yes, very. Brownie is leaning coolly against the bathroom sink, doing absolutely nothing. Angel rolls his eyes. Would you be willing to take a break and come hang out with Angel and me? You mean Angel and I? Not to be too much into the grammar there. Eh, well, I guess we can't get this party started without everyone together. Just promise me you won't tell Sparky I ditched him. Okie dokie. Let's go ahead and we'll save, because now I think we're at that phase where I go get everyone. Let's go downstairs, enter the kitchen... Talk to Sparky. Sparky stands quietly in the corner of the kitchen. And let's finally add him into the party. I'm gonna go... I'm going to uh, talk to him alone, if that's okay. Okay, I got your back. Be careful. Olive slowly walks up to Sparky. Sparky? I can hear everything you're saying about me. I know you hate me. We'll go ahead. Deny. 
No, no, I haven't said anything about you. Really? Oh my dog, I really am going insane. Maybe a nap would help. I don't know. Let's try a joke. The only thing I've been saying behind your back is, nice tail. Huh? Ah, that's actually a pretty good line. Yay! Now he's just normal with us. Did you learn it from Brownie? I'm the most creative when I'm afraid. Ah, I'm pretty scary right now, huh? It feels like a voice in my head is trying to get me to turn on you guys. Oh my. Starting to think that my behavior and these zombies, they can't be a coincidence. Sparky desperately grabs onto Olive's shoulder and Brownie and Angel tense up on the way wash from afar. You have to believe me, I don't want to hurt any of you. I know, I trust you, just Sparky. You're super handsome and cool and tall and really a good boy. If you think that about everyone, Olive. Re that face. Olive gives Sparky a soft and totally not surprising hug. Well, you too too, Coco. I bet she can help get rid of whatever's haunting you. I hope so. Otherwise, damn my, she's gonna turn to demon eyes. I'm just kidding, by the way. I don't think that happens. All right, now everyone is assembled. Let's go ahead and move on to the next chapter. Yes, this game actually has chapters in it, whereas the first game, group hears a high-pitched scream coming from the bedroom. Kokoko? Oh, snap, is she okay? We need to get to her now. Go upstairs. Enter the bedroom, enter the room. All of Scrambles to unlock the doors with their collection of keys. It opens the group, and the group enters. Chapter 2. And we'll go ahead and put that right there, in case I ever need to go back for whatever reason. Olive and their friends find Coco in a tussle with a zombie. That looks strikingly like someone from the previous game in ghost format, but now zombie format. Ah, oh, get me off, you undead bastard. Wait. Ah, oh, get off of me, you undead bastard. Yeah, I don't know what I was saying there earlier. <laughs> Huh, Angel, is that you? And you brought everyone. Fantastic. Get away from her. Or what? I can go Super Saiyan. Watch me in my undead body. <laughs> uh. Sparky pins Angel's undead body toward the ground. He holds a fist threateningly above them. You're behind all this, aren't you? Whoa, wait, 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 Sparky. This isn't you. You're not a violent dog. Never mind the fact I've also tried to be manipulative. Please don't hurt me. I just wanted Coco to fix this body so I could go back to being alive. Oh, really? Derp moment. Sparky suddenly jolts in pain falls over, knocked out cold. Angel's dead body holds up a syringe and winks at the others. W w what the hell is that? Sparky. Olive runs to Sparky and tries to shake him awake. <laughs> hmm, what's this? Wh when? Give it back. Coco run towards Angel's undead body only to be sent flying back by a burst of energy coming from her own wand. This all takes some getting used to, but at least I'll have all of you to practice on. Who are you? After all this time we spent together, you can't tell who I am. You forgot about me! Notice me! But but Peter? <laughs> I took your body! But you didn't take my soul. Now here I am in your old body, taking from you what you took from me. Kind of romantic, huh? Meanwhile, Sparky is lying in Olive's lap. He's beginning to wake up. Sparky! Sparky looked like he had a little too many, if you know what I mean. He grabs Olive by the throat. Ah! Coco tries to knock Sparky out with a textbook, but she only manages to break his hold on Olive. Enough! Run! Angel and Brownie slam the door behind them. 
with Sparky pounding on the other side. The struggle, they struggle to keep it shut. Quick, barricade the door! We're not strong enough to hold it back. Coco and Olive drag a heavy flower pot from the hall to the door. Angel Brownie in the pot just managed to hold the door shut, but Sparky's already putting a crack in the door. My wand! That zombie took my wand! Isn't there another way to stop them? No, this is why he targeted me. That wand is the only thing that can banish him for good. Oh, for cat's sake. Okay, okay, we'll just have to do this the old-fashioned way. We need a weapon, we need to get my wand back, and fighting is the only way. I disagree. There's gonna be some diplomatical way. But we're not going to hurt Sparky, are we? Uh... Me. Come on, Olive, help me scrap uh, search. These guys need to hold the door shut. Okay. Then let's go ahead and save. See if we can gain the mastermind on our side. We'll enter the bathroom. Look under the sink. A bunch of fur products. What are we going to do? Give him a bath? Sparky with a bath? You know, daydreaming about him having a bath with Sparky will make it way harder to kill him. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh. Anyway. How do we beat Sparky with a toilet? Let's keep searching. Oh uh, no, let's keep looking. Inspect the bathtub. No weapon here. Unless we want to drown him. Should you drown him? With these wide paws? Uh, I think you're super talented, Coco. Talented enough to think of something else. All of his trembling. You're right, I'm talented. Let's think of something else. Yes, we're not gonna get rid of Sparky, because we will be needing Sparky. In the same way we'll be needing everyone else. Stay. Inspect the portraits. To pretty much to sum up what was said is, is that she's just kind of reminiscing on her past, and she is agreeing that she is cute. Okay, hold on. There was just that weird double-click moment, so let's go ahead and reload. Go downstairs, the front door has been opened, the zombies notice Olive and Coco, and slowly shamble towards them. Damn it, why now? Come on, we need to go! Coco grabs Olive's paw and runs to the kitchen. Coco wedges a chair between the floor and the doorknob to keep it shut. Zombies pounding on the door is nothing compared to the spark each should hold. Let's find a weapon quick. Just in case. I really do know what to do, but again, I also want Coco on my side. The mastermind. Inspect the knife. Where did all the knives go? This would have been so perfect. Just a few stabs in. All of grumbles. And Sparky would be incapacitated because we'll use the knife to, uh, cut his tendons. But I love Sparky's tendons. Hold up! Is that face? Ugh. Sorry for getting you all involved. And I will forgive you. It's not your fault, Coco. I just hope we don't have to hurt anyone. Me too, honestly. Pots and pans, these are perfect. I mean, perfect. Yeah, we can knock Sparky out and no one has to die. Then it's settled. Take these to Brownie and Angel. Okay, wait, what about you? Saw those zombies. We need a distraction to draw them out of the house and into the yard. I go through the window here. And I'll use Angel's meat as a distraction. And then when they climb out of the tree, of the tree, and the other blah blah blah. I already screwed up the analogy, but to just give a quick run through, she throws the meat at the zombies, she runs to a tree, she leaps in to help the others. And then somehow knocks uh, Sparky and uh, Peter, and they recover the wand. Let's go ahead and 
Let's see, because I have a bad feeling about this. Compliment her plan. Sounds perfect. You're so smart and cool. I know. I know. All right. No time to spare. Nope. We're not doing that route. Forgive Coco, because I already know what's going to happen. So let's go ahead and inspect the fridge. It's me. It's just how the hell is this going to help? I might have an idea. Really? What is it? You'll think it's stupid. What? This isn't the time to hold back on ideas. Just tell me. Trust the meat. All the zombies outside are just a bunch of angry d -d dogs, right? And dogs love meat. Oh no. So maybe if we give them some as a gift, they'll listen to us. Olive? You're very sweet, and we all love you for it, but... That is the worst idea I have ever heard. They don't want meat unless it's ours. You know what? No. I don't need to save for this. Trust the meat. How do you know? They're bad dogs. Have you asked? I don't need to ask. They all talk about his revenge. And they chased you through the woods while groaning about it. And they just coincidentally showed up at the same time as Peter did. We can't trust them. Trust the meat. Please, I just want to talk to them. They're all angry and hurt, and we are... Going to do against a thousand zombies, even if we have a weapon. We're going to get my wand back, and I'll... Are you going to kill them again? It's us or them, Olive! Coco shakily stands between Olive and the fridge full of meat. You know what, no. My birthday wish is for you is to trust the meat. There was a note on your door, and it said, You owe me a birthday wish. Coco begrudgingly steps out of the way. Olive is surprised that this works. Olive finds a tray in one of the cupboards and scoops as much as meat as he can onto it as possible. They walk in towards the door, as, and they kick the chair out of the room for the doorknob. Olive, what are you doing? The door bursts open, the zombies stream into the kitchen. Coco panics and jumps on the kitchen table. Olive follows in Oregon... To gain some height. The loudest voice they can manage, they scream. Wait! We're going to talk this out over an assortment of delicious meats. They start throwing chunks of meat into the crowd of zombies. Holy shit, is this really how I'm going to die? The zombies start eating the meat. Nom nom, meat. I'll continue throwing meat at the zombies. It's a bloodbath, the likes of which they've never seen. Eventually the tray empties and all that's left is a small pool of blood. Okay, now let's talk. What do you guys want? Meat. No, you morons, we want revenge. Yeah, revenge. Okay, revenge, but revenge won't get you your lives back or your bodies fixed. Maybe revenge doesn't make you happy. Happy? Yeah, what makes me happy is eating snacks with a bunch of my really nice friends. You could all be my friends. They'll use friendship as a weapon here. Because friendship is indeed magic somehow. Friends? Yeah, friends. If you help us get Coco's magic wand back, we can fix you up using your magic. Uh, really? That sounds... A furry of knives... Oh, sorry. A flurry of knives suddenly flies through the door. They zip around, slicing and stabbing everything in their path. Get down, Olive! Coco grabs Olive and pulls them under the kitchen table. The knives have sliced a path through the zombies. Hmm. The look of feeling accomplished as I hold a wand, and then I bring mass death wherever I go, slicing everything with a bunch of knives. Stabbing traitors, a beloved pastime. 
Now, where are you two? I need to add you to my collection. Sparky's taking care of the others as we speak. Patches steps forward right into the tray of blood. So, this is what won them over, huh? A bunch of disgusting meat and empty promises? I'll never understand how others are so quick to trust. And after Ginger gave them life, and I gave them justice. Or rather, I felt the need to propagate everything and spread a bunch of lies of my own. After all, it's all for Senpai. I mean, <clears throat> it's all for the glory. It still wasn't enough to keep them loyal. Atches notices Olive's tail sticking out from under the kitchen table. Hmm, is that a tail I spot? Hey, <laughs> there you are. Patches reaches for, uh, Peter reaches for Olive's tail, but a zombie playing dead on the ground grabs his leg. Well, double whammy there. He hits the floor and loses grip on the wand. Coco scrambles out from under the table to grab it. No! No! Coco sends a massive blast of energy at Peter. The kitchen is filled with bright green light. Peter is gone. For now. Did you vaporize him? Ah, no. He got away. I wonder who Ginger is. Screaming is heard from upstairs. Angel and Brownie. Sparky. We need to go. Alright. And we need to save. Let's leave. Shredded up zombies are strewn about. Likely from Peter's earlier tantrum. Again, I am aware it's Patches, but just to reiterate that... I'll probably be switching between Patches and Peter, but more likely Peter. That's kind of the joke. The ones that are able to move don't seem to want to hurt Coco or Olive. They're just mingling and looking at Olive's birthday cake. What on earth was in the meat? It's just really yummy. Mmm... You know, let's try something. Stay. Inspect the table. Let's go. Yeah, I guess we don't have time. Just go upstairs. Olive and Coco make it upstairs to find Brownie knocked down at Sparky's feet. Angel has Sparky in a chokehold, but it doesn't seem to phase him. Sparky stomps on Brownie's leg, breaking it. Oh, ouch. Ah! He grabs hold of Angel's arm from around his neck and crushes it in a grip. Ah! Sparky swings Angel by his broken arm onto the ground. Stop it! Who are you? Why are you doing this? All Sparky does is shoot all of a smile. Sparky slams into the ground as though through gravity it had manipulated. Ah! I'll make you feel pain worse than death. Once you're out of that body, that is. Ugh! Whatever soul's inhibiting Spark's body is forced out. The soul looks a little disoriented. Looks like another character that I may have forgotten to go check in on on the first game. Ah! That dog! That ghostly dog escapes through a wall. Ah, who cares? Angel! Coco runs to Angel and Brownie's sides. Angel, are you okay? Brownie? Um... Ah... Is that really all you have to say? Um... I'm a little stunned at everything that's happened, and I'm in a lot of pain, so yes, ow is all I have to say. Despite the fact your leg's supposed to be broken, and yet you're standing up like you're completely fine. Uh... I'm just glad I didn't hold the door while Brownie made your mom jokes for nothing. I thought I could take him down with sick burns. Hilarity doesn't always win. I'm just glad you're okay, both of you. That dog. Oh wait, Sparky, is he okay? It might take a moment for his soul to find his way back to his body. Sparky's body starts to stir. Ah, oh, that's him now. 
coughs a bit and slowly sits up, dazed. Olive. Brownie Ack, is your leg broken? Yeah, you broke it. What? Oh no. Oh fuck. I can't believe it. I can't believe I let him knock me out. And now look at you. You seem to have broken my arm as well. No. No. Ah, don't start howling, you guys. It's so lame. Wait, I don't hear the voices anymore. How did you guys fix it? Me. Hey. You were possessed. I forced the spirit out, but she's flown away to dog knows where. Probably back to Peter for further instruction. Ah, oh, they could attack us at any time. We need to find her. You have... You have got to be kidding me. Now is not the time. We need to make a plan. The, the zombies, they can help us. Zombies? Oh, right. I guess some of them are on our side now. They're all on our side. They're all good friends and all good dogs. All of Wiggles in excitement. Their friends do not share the same sentiment. All right, let's go downstairs and make a plan with them. Can you walk, Sparky? Sparky stands up slowly as he wobbles a little bit, but seems to be well enough. Yup. And you, Brownie? Shut the hell up. Ah, I'm just kidding. Sparky, you're buff, but you'll carry her. I guess it's the least I could do. Brownie reluctantly allows herself to be carried. And chapter 3. Coco jumps into the living room table, knocking a bunch of plates over and threatening to ruin the lovely birthday cake. Alright, Zombos, here's the plan. If you want your, uh... Your body's healed and your lives back. Bodies? The zombies gather around moaning in shame, shambling less violently than before. Your so-called saviors, Patches and what's your name? I think it was Ginger. Peter and Ginger have betrayed you. They're going to attack at any moment to try and wipe every single one of us out. And only because together we're draw we're strong enough to take them at down. So fan out and keep an eye out for them. If you find them, let me know, and I'll take care of the rest. Ah, uh, sorry if my English has been a little off. Understood. Bodies, friends. The zombies slowly make their way out of the living room, remaining every area of the estate. Uh, it's going to take forever to get the smell of dead dog out of this house. Wait, so what are we going to do? We're going to sit the hell down and wait for them to find Peter and Ginger. But I want to help. Who's going to do a better job of finding them? One living dog or a thousand dead ones? I mean, I like to think I'm a lot smarter than a bunch of rotting corpses. Oh, uh, okay, okay. If you really want to help, go get me a first aid kit from the bathroom upstairs. Okay. Oh, Olive, you watch him and make sure he doesn't do anything stupid or get himself possessed again. Okie dokie. Oh, yay. Enter the kitchen. Expect a knife. All the knives are missing. Can't be good. Inspect the fridge, huh? No meat. I wanted to try some now, but I'm completely traumatized by the smell of flesh and blood. You can have cake. Still cake in the room. Oh right, I guess I cooked. I guess cooked meat shaped like a cake is way better than raw meat, like a piece of raw meat. Yes, we're gonna attempt to get them on our side. Inspect the pots and pans. Well. This would have done well against the zombies. But thank dog we didn't have to use them. Let's uh, stay. Inspect the dead zombies. Zombies capable of walking while the rest stirring around in the room. They look pretty relaxed, just lying around. This is not much living room anymore. Aha, <laughs> good one! And we're gonna get dear old Sparky on our side. Go upstairs, enter the bedroom, enter the room regardless, inspect the desk. And I am going to kind of start hurrying it up here a tad, so... 
I am sincerely apologizing if I don't read everything. Inspect the bunk bed. A zombie's having a snooze in the top bunk. Inspect the magical circle entrenched in the floor. I wonder how any of this magic stuff works. It'd be helpful to know how to use magic, right? Do you want to be a witch, Sparky? Eh? I mean, if it meant it could be more use to us, sure, but it's not great knowing I was the weakest link. Weakest, but you're still so calm and tool, and aha, thanks, Olive, but you know what I mean, right? Mm -hmm. I don't want to be possessed again. Alright, so we will not inspect that. So leaving the circle alone, the zombies look like they're having so much fun. Leave. Enter the bathroom. Inspect the bathtub. Huh, I guess that's all... I guess that'll happen whenever anything here is made for cats, huh? Oh, right, your bathtub must be huge. Yeah, but my family doesn't really use it. We just hose off in the yard. Duh, you guys sound cute. And I think that means he's at max. So we're gonna go ahead and look under the sink. Mainly marketed amidst the products. This small first aid kit. I wonder why she needs this. Can't she just heal Angel using magic? Oh, right, I'm not sure what... That extent is. Sorry for that momentary distraction. Alright, I'm not sure what the extent of her abilities are. I guess if she could heal, she could have just healed Angel's body instead of giving him patches. Ooh. Oh no. I don't think she can undo death, but she promised the zombies she'd fix their bodies. But that means she's going to break her promise, and they'll all be sad. I think they'll be more than just sad. You can't tell anyone about this, or else the zombies will freak out. Do you think that them seeing this first aid kit, they'll get suspicious? As the two speak in, hushed whispers, the, zom the bathroom door opens as zombies peer in. Oh, oh sorry. We'll knock the next time. Nice first aid kit. The zombie slowly shambles away. I guess we're okay. We'll leave. Go downstairs. Stay. Talk to Coco. Here it is, Coco. All the pans over the first aid kit. Fantastic. Now what? Now scram. I need to take care of Brownie and Angel's injuries. First things first, sanitation. Blip. Uh-oh. You got a problem with it? Put on the sunglasses! Brownie becomes incredibly flustered. Wait, here, let me do it. I do not want Sparky licking me. No, I won't licking is very archaic. I took a sports medicine class, so no worries. Sparky shows Coco how to clean and dress Brownie's angel's wounds. Everyone seems so relaxed together. It makes Olive super happy. They find a marker and draw little hearts and stars on their friends' bandages. They're all done. Wow, you know what? You're not as dumb as I thought you were. Heh <laughs> heh, thanks. So out of curiosity, you told the zombies you take care of the rest once they found Peter and Ginger. Yeah, I mean, kill them, right? How? With magic? Bah. Is that what this is? Huh? What is it? You were just teaching me first aid, so I'll teach you sorcery in return. Guess getting possessed really makes a dog feel helpless without my any magic, huh? Sparky looks very uncomfortable. I'm just curious, I... Sparky, my friend, it's completely understandable. The art of magic is a much sought after skill. Only passed down from generation of magical fell lines to generation of magical fell lines. I. Not saying anything. I suppose you're lucky to have a rare friend such as I. Be happy to tell you how I'll defeat Peter and Ginger and save this sorry bunch. Brownie giggles more by Koku's unwavering arrogance. The plan is to draw a magic circle. You remember the one from the school, right? Or the one in my room? Coco uses all of his marker to draw the magic circle on a scrap piece of bandage. The circle just needs to be big enough for a soul to pass through. You can turn it into a portal with the wand. 
From the portal, you can summon demon spirits from Inferno, from Purgatory, from wherever. And you can also banish things into it. Just force them into the portal and shut it. Ta-da! Your problem is gone forever. Sparky Lane's uncomfortably close to Coco. Brownie looks a little annoyed. Coco, you're so flippin' cool. I know, right? I know, that's not the real text, but... Yeah. Uh, yeah, you're cool. So now what? Now scram! You're such a restless dog. Is learning about magic really that dull? Just wait here until Peter and Ginger show up. Oh, okay. Sparky looks a little antsy. Can I go for a walk? <sighs> Olive, you go with him. Like I said before, don't let him do anything stupid. Aha, uh -huh, okie dokie. And now we exit the house. Inspect the zombies. The zombies are still wandering, bumping into each other. Hello. Hey. Somehow a zombie accidentally smacks its head on a wall. Can't believe Coco trusted this search to these guys. Doing their best. Inspect the grave. Do you think Peter likes being an undead cat? Does it matter? I'd say he deserves it. If it didn't mean he could crash your birthday party and terrorize us. If he wanted to come, he could have just asked. Yes, because when you're dead, you can somehow invite yourself to a birthday party. Inspect the gate. Were we walking the forest? Uh, sort of. I just have a feeling that Ginger isn't going to be in the house. Why would she? We have the wand and the zombies on our side. She and Patches are totally a disadvantage in there. So I'm going to search for them in the forest. Sounds a little dangerous. I guess it'd be nice walking together in the woods without a bunch of zombies chasing us. And I suppose if it were bad enough, I could have them go alone. And it's a good thing I did what I did. In all honesty, it'd probably be too dangerous for you. Huh? But I'm kind of afraid to go alone. It'd be really nice to have you with me. Just make sure you stay close, okay? Please don't make me regret taking you along. I don't know what I'd do if you got hurt because of me. Aw, Sparky. N no problem. I'll be your guard dog. Eh <laughs> thanks, Olive. Enter the woods. We're gonna keep quiet. Wrenches and dried up leaves crunch under their paws. We're still gonna keep quiet. For a small pup, the woods seem to stretch on infinitely. Whoa, a super secret cellar. It's got a big lock on it. Awful sounds can be heard from within. All of Sparky press their ears against the door. Someone is sobbing loudly. It sounds like Ginger. She's all alone and crying. We need to get in and help her. Sparky tries to open the cellar door, but it won't budge. Maybe Coco or Angel know where the key is. So uh, run back in and tell them. Wait, I have a better idea. Sparky reaches into his jacket and pulls out Coco's wand. That he proudly somehow manages to pickpock. Uh, how did you get that? He blasts the lock right off. The sobbing from within the cellar goes uninterrupted. So sorry, Olive. I stole the wand from Coco while she was distracted, but it was for a good reason. I totally promise it's not going to get everyone killed later down the road. Possible spoil, but I probably am just going to pretend I didn't say that. I'm going to kill Ginger. Wh what? Oh, sorry. I should have said I'm going to befriend her. I mean, banish her. Oh, I guess that's better. But shouldn't we let the zombies and C Coco take care of this? Coco will be super mad that we took her wand. And we might get her hurt if we face Ginger alone. I need to be the one to face her. No one else can get her. Okay, just to make sure. Sparky sighs and pats Olive on the head. You're too cute to stop me. Just wait up here, okay? 
Sparky lifts the heavy solid door, moonlight streams onto the steps, down toward the darkness. He enters, not waiting for all of They wait around a little, but in a fit of anxiety, they end up scrampering down the steps behind. Olive fumbles into the dark for a bit. They bump into someone. Sparky finds a pull cord to a light. Jeez, Olive, I told you to wait outside. It's only been like 10 seconds. In a matter of 10 seconds, a lot can happen. It felt a lot longer to me. Sorry. In the dim light, they find Ginger sobbing. Yeah, let's inspect the jack-o'-lantern. There's a shriveled old jack-o'-lantern sitting on the barrel. I know we're here to commit a horrible deed, but... Olive scratches away at the bottom of the crumbling jack-o'-lantern. <laughs> they stick it on their head. Boo! Ah! Damn it, Olive. I can't take anything seriously when you're like this. And now, we confront Ginger. Hey, Ginger, right? Sniffle. You recognize me, don't you? You took my body. Ginger is ignoring Sparky. Ah. Look. I'm here, I'm trying to very find a reason not to kill you. Apologize, show remorse, tell me Peter's forced you to do all this. Ginger goes quiet. How can you kill me if I'm already dead? You're kidding me, right? Ginger sniffles and Sparky sighs. He pulls out a marker and begins drawing an anonymous circle on the ground. Ginger doesn't bat an eye. The circle is complete. With one swing of the wand, it bursts into a bright orange flames. You know what? Intervention. Olive punches Sparky square in the jaw. Ah, Olive! They continue bay at, huh, batting at him. Bad dog! Bad to the dog! Their soft paw hurts nothing but Sparky's guilty conscience. Is she the bad dog? No, you're the both the bad dogs. Olive grabs the wand from Sparky. Well, talk about just taking something for yourself. Ginger sniffles. Sparky is silent. Olive scampers towards Ginger. Why are you crying? Do you want to talk about it? I failed. I'm a failure. Ginger continues sobbing. Olive tries to pat her on the back, only to realize that she's just a ghost. And it just goes right through her instead. But Peter, he won't talk to me. I, I don't know what to do. Before I met him, I had nothing to live for. I had no one. All I had were these strange abilities. Abilities that labeled me as a freak. Until I found him as alone and strange as I was. A lie, we were alone, but in death we found each other. Kindred spirits. If not for him, I would have just stayed in the inferno forever, but he gave me a reason to use my abilities to come back here. But now, I have no one. I'm sorry, Olive and Sparky. I really am a pathetic and worthless. Just send me to the inferno where I belong. Ginger. That's what you wanted to hear, right? Just banish me already as I charge up. Ah! Olive, what's going on? <laughs> Peter! Sparky scrambles for the pool cord. He turns on the light. Ow! Oh, oh, dog, he cut you. The, the, the wand, it's gone. Who, who cares? Are you all right? Oh, yeah, I'm fine. Peter, it was Peter. I'd recognize that cute laugh from anywhere. He must have come back here to save me. Maybe he wasn't giving up on me after all. Maybe I'm worth something. You, you were just bait, weren't you? Don't you even care that he's using you? You're ready to die just because a windbag like Peter might think less of you? Do you realize how many times I'd give up if I thought I'd like that? This is all my fault. We could have all died here because of me. Actually, hold on. We could all die here because of me. But I'm not just gonna sob in a corner until someone tells me it's not my fault. I need to fix this. Spikey runs out of the cellar. And you know what? We're gonna do something rad. Uh, are you okay? I wish I could just make everyone happy. I should go find Sparky. Coco told me to make sure he doesn't get himself into trouble. Oh, I think you'd like Coco. She's magical too. 
And Brownie's really goofy. Should probably cheer you up at it, at least for a second. And Angel's really sweet and caring. He used to be the ghost, too. Angel? I don't think we can get along. He's the one who hurt Peter and stole his body. Although, I suppose, Peter did the same to him. What do I do, Olive? I don't know who to trust. Well, you could come back to the house with me. No, not to fight Peter or Angel or anyone. Maybe it'd be nice to just sit here in the living room and have some cake. If you want. Mmm, cake. The cake is the truth and not a lie, baby. There's a shrivel little jack lantern sitting there. Hey, Ginger, what do you think of this? It's pretty spooky, huh? Olive sticks the crumbling old jack lantern on his head again. Boo. I already saw you do that with Sparky. It was pretty funny, though. Alright. You somewhat like me. Bye, Ginger. Chapter 4. I thought you weren't coming for a sec. Let's go. Peter has the one who knows what havoc he's going to wreak. Run home. Olive oh, and Sparky run as fast as they can through the woods. Sparky keeps his pace while Olive is struggling to keep up. Sparky, just so you know, I'm not mad at you for any of this, but it's not but it's not your fault. Run home. And we ain't gonna have time for that. So we're just gonna continue running. Zombies scream to seem to have collapsed lifeless heaps. They're all dead. Like, really dead. Enter the house. Wait. Ginger Ghost rises up from the cobblestone right in front of the door. Ah! Oh my dark. Ginger, you could have given us a heart attack. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I want to help for my own peace of mind. Really? Wow. Does this mean we're friends? Ah, friends. This is great. I'm so excited. Olive dances around Ginger, who stands flustered and confused. Ahead. Glad to have you on board, Ginger. Sorry about everything. It's all right. I just sort of realized you guys are pretty nice. Not to talk myself up or anything, but you really need my abilities if Peter has the wand. Let's go find him then. Enter the house. Uh-oh. Looks like Peter was already on the move. Enter the kitchen. Leave. Take a moment. Inspect the table. Everyone was just here. Did Peter take them somewhere? Knowing him, he's probably waiting for us somewhere. Waiting why? Uh, talks a lot about all the ways he's going to hurt you guys. And most of them are long, painful, and require spectators. Uh, how did you fall for a guy like him? You wouldn't understand. I think I might be... insecure. Nope. Stay, inspect the zombies, suppose dogs what happened to them, they were brutally murdered, and they thought, pop back to life. Well, I know that. I mean, I brought them back and gave them a chance to avenge themselves? Yes. Why aren't they up in avenging? I think Peter sliced through a bunch of them earlier. And I guess he sliced them up even more than after that. I thought he cared about these dogs. He lied. Well, he's lucky he's so cute. What was that? Er, nothing. To the kitchen. Just back to the fridge. I don't see Peter anywhere. Ginger giggles. I'll quit joking around. I was just joking. I'm really trying to look for him. Because I'm going to need her on my side. Inspect the knife block. All the knives are missing. That can't be good. Inspect costs. And sometimes I imagine Peter and I cooking dinner together. Wow, that's so romantic. Do you like cooking? Yes. I guess you haven't eaten anything for a while, huh? Ah, well, I don't really cook to eat. I just like making things and sharing them with people. Duh. Olive tries to hug Ginger, but just kind of phases through her body. She appreciates the attempt. And now we have her on our side. Leave. 
go upstairs. Enter the bedroom. Enter the room. Olive, run! All of all his pals are bound up in a magical wire. Shut up, traitor. Actually, hold on. Yeah. Angel's mouth is bound. Ginger, you made it just in time. And you brought guests. Peter, you're talking to me again? Oh, of course. I couldn't do any of this without my lovely assistant. <laughs> Ginger, don't listen to him. He's just manipulating you. Wire grabs Sparky. They slam him to the wall with the others. Enough chit-chat. Let's get our new pets in a comfier space. Then we can really give Angel a show. As thanks for all the pain he's caused me. Peter aims his wand at Olive. No! Ginger sends a blast of energy from her paw into Peter's chest. Peter seems to stand steady until he falls over dead. The magic wires that bound Olive's friends dissipate. Angel pulls himself up coughing. Is he dead? Ah, oh, you bitch. How dare you! I was so close to getting vengeance, and now I have been denied. Peter? Peter lunges at Angel, but he doesn't seem to make it. He's stopped midair by Ginger's magic. You, you, you assumed I'd be here to just pick up where I left off. I was so hurt when you turned your back on me. You told me I was a failure. Am I supposed to forget all that? Ginger opens a portal in the middle of the room. You wouldn't. You love me. Ginger brings lowering Peter into the portal. I'm not going down alone. Peter bites onto Olive's leg. They fall into the ground and start slipping into the portal with him. Ah! Olive! Ginger quickly closes the portal, but it's too late. Chapter 5. At the end point of this. W where am I? H Hello? Uh, Peter, you're okay. Are you okay? Sorry. What the? Oh, for dog's sake. Peter looks at his transparent paws for a moment, and then suddenly slaps Olive in the face. Ah! Did that hurt? Uh, no, not really. It was really scary, though. Ugh. I can't even pass the rest of eternity torturing you. This place is far worse than Inferno. It's hell on steroids. Let's go ahead and save here. We're not in the Inferno. Where are we? We're in Purgatory, you dolt. We didn't make it all the way through Ginger's shitty portal, and now we're stuck here alone for all eternity. But I'm not alone. I have you. Oh god. That look of... Oh god. He's right. I'm going to spend an eternity in purgatory with this guy. Oh, and it's in love with me too now. Great! Well, I'm not in it. No, you're a disgusting mutt that just shares love with everyone like a wild animal. You're no use to me unless you live for me and only me. You know, that is actually kind of a true statement that he says there. In any other game that just involves just him minus the third one, you can only win him over and no one else in true Yendary fashion. W what? It's okay to love lots of people, Peter. Don't you have parents you love or for friends? You know what, Olive? I think I'd rather be alone for all eternity than listen to this after-school special drivel. Peter begins floating away in the void of purgatory. Hey, wait, Peter, wait! When you were forced out of your body, you ended up in the inferno with Ginger and the zombie dogs, right? Correct. Your point. How'd you get back? I got lucky. <laughs> 
I found the soul of a powerful Wesper and got her to fall in love with me. She followed my every whim. It was a lot of fun playing with her, honestly. But now I won't be able to come back here unless someone from the outside lets me. And Ginger probably won't come back for me if she knows I'll kill all her new friends. She's always been... Peter Shrudders. Sentimental. Do you really think she'd come back for me? Peter's eyes all up and down. That's a very good point, Olive. Maybe we should stick together after all. You just ousted yourself and helped me achieve my master plan. <laughs> Peter grabs Olive's arm hard enough to hurt. If they were alive to feel anything. I'm not letting you go until we're out of here for as long as it takes. Okie dokie, Peter. Let's go ahead. Save. What do you do for fun? You were in the library lots at school, right? You like reading? It's fun, but mostly I like cutting up bad dogs into tiny little pieces. Is that really that much fun? It feels very productive. Like cleaning dust out of a bookshelf. It's self-care in a way. Getting rid of the toxic people in your life that only want to hurt you. You'd kill me if you had a chance, right? Absolutely, I have no hesitation. I'm like a Sith. The dark side is the only thing that matters. But I don't think I'd ever hurt you. Uh, that's what you think. I know what side you're on. You're with everyone else and I'm everyone's enemy. No, how could you say that? I want to be friends, not enemies. I don't want to be your friend. I want to be left alone. Of course you do. Hey, Peter, bad dogs should be punished, right? Oh, yes. Punished dearly. Olive punches pa Peter, you know what, Patches in the face. This time I'll say Patches. He feels nothing, but it's still pretty pissed. But what the hell was that for? Olive growls softly. You're a bad dog, you're here because you, you're b b bad and you don't know how to talk to people. Oh my. Ugh. And dang it, I wanted him on my side. I've always wondered, why did you kill Angel in the first place? It was fun. No, no, why did you really kill him? Back in Coco's room, you called him a traitor. Oh, that. Forget it. All of Sulk's fine. I guess I'll just guess until I get it right. Was he super mean to you? No. Did he hit you? No. Hmm. Ooh. And the sad thing is, is I know what this really is over. Did he break your heart? Talk about something else. You know that's true. You know that is true. That's like the minor spoiler here. It's the only one I'm giving. Did he betray you? Hmm, good guess. He turned his back on me. Even when he knew he was the only one I cared about. I mean, uh-oh, I ousted myself. How could I do this? Ah, uh, I mean, I hate him, I hate him, I've always hated him. Now Swamp, I've always hated him with, I always loved him, and then what you'll get is an interesting little mod where, yeah, I'll make that joke later. Eep. This'll probably peep him off. Olive gives Patch, uh, Patches a big ol' hug. Why are you doing this? I don't know, maybe you've hadn't had a hug in a while. I know I could always go for a hug. Olive hugs him really hard. He can't seem to get them off, so he just lets them hug him. And I think these two may result. But let's do this one. It's pretty confusing seeing how you like... You look so much like Angel. I don't look anything like me. Oh, sorry. Blech. I don't look like Angel. He looks like me. Olive curls up against Peter. What the fuck are you doing? 
going to nap until Ginger comes to get us. We'll nap somewhere else. But what if she comes and you're not with me? We need to stick together. We're both going to get out. Why do you want me to get out? After everything I've said so far, don't you realize I'm just going to continue tormenting you and your friends? I'll save your soul, Peter. But you don't deserve to be trapped in purgatory forever. I trust that you'll be a good boy and not hurt anyone. Oh my. I feel like I might become a protagonist in the future release of something. Only other spoiler that will be mentioned. Olive curls up once more. I'll make sure you get out of here and get a slice of my birthday cake. Olive curls up and promptly falls asleep. A portal arrives in the void. Olive and Peter are asleep. A paw reaches out and grabs Olive's leg, pulling them through the portal. Got them! Let's close the portal before Peter comes through. W wait Can't just leave him in there. What's this? Is this our chance to finally get rid of him? Because I know he's a bad dog, but we can't give up on him. No one gave up on Sparky or Ginger. You've done some bad stuff too, Coco. They have a point. My life would be over if you guys gave up on me after everything I've done. But you can't teach an old dog new tricks. Actually, that's kind of false. You can teach it new tricks. You just gotta be clever on your teaching methods. Anyway, he's not even that old, though. I mean, not that I'm defending him. Patches won't learn me because he just doesn't want to. No, no, no! It's my birthday. You already got your birthday wish, Olive, with the whole meat thing. Meat thing? Okay. I'll grant your wish. Oh, you've gotta be kidding me. Olive's right, and I'm not just gonna say and I'm not just saying this because I'm hung up on Peter. Everyone is worth saving. We should have some conditions for him though. Yeah, just tell me what it is and I'll do it. And we arrive to pretty much the ending. Is he dead? Does dead even mean anything anymore? Peter wakes up grasping for air. Olive? Patches! Slash Peter! Isn't this so exciting? With Ginger and Coco's magic combined, we fixed your body. We even gave you some of Angel's old clothes. No need to return it. I have to burn them. Phew, nice one. Brownie gives Angel a high five. Rude. What the fuck? What have I got myself into? He thinks to himself. Peter tries to sit up, but something jerks his neck back. What, what the hell is this? Patches throws a fit. He's trying to tear off the collar. Though his teeth and claws are sharp, it does little against the strange glowing chains. G Ginger gave me a magic leash. It's supposed to keep you from doing evil things. You only have to wear it until everyone's convinced you're a good boy. Which shouldn't take long, right? I know you're a good boy. Deep down inside. Oh my dog, a leash? Really? Do you have any idea how demeaning this is? But this was the only way they'd let you come back with me. It's a good look on you, Peter. And you. So what? Does Angel on my, own my body now? Why do I have to be stuck in this inferior twink's body? <laughs> Ouch. That's actually pretty hilarious. Considering in the fact that it does have some magical abilities, I think. Inferior Twink? Look, buddy, we're doing you a huge favor. Maybe you can have your body back once you've proven that you're uh, a good boy. For now, though, you're stuck in Angel's inferior Twink body. Ouch! Talk about betrayal. It's easier to stop if it goes on a killing spree. Stop talking about my body like that. 
Wait, what do I have to do now to prove I'm good? Uh, don't manipulate anyone, don't stab anyone, don't kill anyone. Olive's got you on a tight leash 24-7. Just make... T uh, just to make sure to... What? We're gonna be best friends! Olive gives Patches a big ol' hug. He's stunned. This is the best surprise birthday party ever! I'm going to kill you all in your sleep. Except that... Uh, gonna have to be for the next game. Everyone laughs wildly at Peter's predicament. And I believe this makes the ending. Everyone survived. I made Coco the happiest. I made Sparky the happiest. I made Ginger the happiest. I made even Peter the happiest, who's cut the devil hordes trying to escape while Olive's just giving him a big old bear hug. I didn't make Angel the happiest? I feel underaccomplished. He was the one I wanted on my side the whole time. Oh well. Anyways, this has been Perfect Apocalypse 2. So, I've been Daedric Diamond, and if you enjoyed the video, be sure to like and subscribe, and stay tuned for more videos, content that I do in the future. I will be doing the third game here, so do stay tuned for it. Otherwise, with that being said, I think that's this video, so I'll see you in the next one. Until then, bye bye